any word sum. Uh, then there's the opposite uh, of that. For a long time, the word John Brown was used as a curse. Um, for someone to say, I'll be John Brown, was a, a, considered a euphemism for the words, I'll be damned. And, um, you know, the criticism of him uh, really just does not hold up under scrutiny. Uh, I mean, he's, he's often demonized for being either treasonous or violent. Um, when, even if you were to take away the larger issue of what was going on in the world, just to look at the small events of, of what actually happened at Harper's Ferry, for him to be criticized as being you know, treasonous, for people to say, well, he, he picked up a gun against Americans, and gee golly, you just don't do that. Well, so, and then the president sent in Robert E. Lee <laughs> to try to take him out. With, within two years, Robert E. Lee was leading an armed, was leading an armed army to try to take down America while the American soldiers were out marching against them singing John Brown's body. Or, and, I mean, within violence, John Brown did, did dabble some with violence, but there was never a shred of evidence that he took any pleasure in it at all. Well, meanwhile, here are these Virginia militiamen who are drunk and hacking off dead, dead body parts. You know, I mean, when you, when you look at it on any level, it's very baffling. Um, you know, additionally, there, there aren't too many people now that I've ever come across that, um, that hate John Brown and hate Abraham Lincoln. It's kind of an interesting scenario. I never, I, you know, because I was trying to look up and find different points of view, I never found anyone who made that argument. John Brown tried to start a war to free the slaves, and he's hated for it. Abraham Lincoln started a war to free the slaves, and he is an American hero. Especially considering, I think, if John Brown had been successful in his attempts and had been allowed to continue, I think he would have been able to free the slaves with a, a, lot, a, lot, fewer, a lot fewer lives lost. So anyway, that is my opinion that I have about John Brown for my research. I want to leave you, though, with the opinion of someone who is perhaps a little bit better to comment, and that is Frederick Douglass himself. I mentioned him some earlier. Uh, he was a good friend of John Brown's. He knew John Brown. He was a slave himself, which is why I feel that he probably knows more what he's talking about than I do. So for a time, John Brown, um, he was a little weary of, or sorry, excuse me, Frederick Douglass was a little weary of John Brown's use of violence, and he was also, you know, not too convinced in his ability to do what he was going to set out to do. Uh, John, uh, Frederick Douglass would write about the last time he ever saw Brown. Uh, they were together, John Brown was going to be heading out to go to Harper's Ferry. They took a walk together, and John Brown stopped at one point. And he literally took Frederick Douglass in his arms and said, please come with me. I promise I will protect you. I will not let anyone hurt you. I will not let anything bad happen to you. Come with me. And Frederick Douglass said no. Later on in his life, he had a change of heart. And he, came, he actually called John Brown the greatest hero of the time. And I love this quote from him. He said, his zeal in the cause of my race was far greater than mine. It was as the burning sun to my taper light. Mine was bounded by time. His stretched away to the boundless shores of eternity. I could live for the slave, but he could die for him. So that is the end of my presentation.